Hey everyone, this is Major Batman at Link Hero Studios here to show you some ways to make some movement of some common pieces using a script as well as how to use render textures to do output. I'm using the Polygon Office Toolkit from Cinti Studios. In it I'm using some, some of their assets, so I'm using a security camera, just some desk office stuff. I'm also creating a web camera and to show you that a uh, script is also doable with the fan. And then I have these two projectors set up to show you what the output will be. So let's get started. The first thing we need to do, so we're going to show you both a, a static webcams, so it's just a picture output is someplace else, as well as a moving one. We're gonna need to create what are called render textures. Render textures allow a camera to output to a particular texture and update it within the game. So we're going to right click in our project folder and we're going to create down to render texture. We're going to name this RT webcam and then we're going to duplicate it using control D and we're going to rename this RT security camera. All right, so the next the next step is to go into each of these cameras. So we'll start with the webcam as it's a little easier. Uh, we're going to right click and we're going to add a camera. And you can already see a preview down here of what the camera's view will be. And we could change this. We can change, change um, it to a physical camera. We can ch adjust the focal length, uh, change the sensor size things of that nature, but we're just going to leave it as is at the moment. We're going to adjust the field of view, and what we're really targeting is this right here, this target texture. When it's set to none, it just, it just sits there, but if you set it to a texture, it'll update. So we're going to drag the our render texture for the webcam to the render texture, and we can already see the output. So we're going to do the same for the security camera. The security camera is cool because the, the camera has two components as the camera as well as the camera head. And since what we're going to do in the future is make this rotate so it actually looks like a security camera, we're going to add the camera to the camera head. So we're going to again right click add camera. So we have our camera with the camera head and the camera. And we also want to update the render texture on this. So we can go in and select the render texture security camera. The reason we have two is one for each of the cameras. All right, next up we're going to add the, where we're going to a billboard or a, um, like a TV or something of that nature. So since we're pretending to use the projector to project it on the screen, which we could add, maybe add some light particles or something of that nature, we're just going to, we're just going to add a texture element here. So we'll select the baseboard here and we're going to right click and we'll go to UI and we're going to add a raw image. So raw image instead of image, the raw image allows for the render texture to be added directly to it, which is what we want. So we add that in there and then what we're going to do is we're going to take the canvas and we're going to change it to world space overview reset the position so now it's a bit closer and then we want it to come out just ever so slightly and then the next thing we're going to want to do is we're going to change the size of this to 0.01 and we can we can upsize this image as well so now that looks to be approximately what we want. And we're going to repeat this. Okay, and we're going to move this over. So now we have two canvases with raw images. Now to tie this together, we'll make this left one the security camera. And so you take the target texture of the raw image, many assets, so let's just drag and drop. So we'll make the left one the security camera and we're going to make the right one the web camera. And you already get the initial viewpoint. So let's add some spice to that security camera. 
So what we're going to want to do is we're going to create a script. And so right click C sharp script called camera movement. What we'll want to do is we want to move the camera left and right. So first we want to add a, a variable for speed. So this allows us to change the speed um, using the components and I have to come, come into the code. So let's create a public float speed equals one. Then we're going to need to create two vector threes. I will name it point A and point B. Now we could adopt the same principles and include, you know, how far left and how far right you want it to go, but we're going to hard code this just to kind of show the comparison. All right, at start, well, we're going to define both point A and point B. So point A is going to, we're going to start with where the camera head is. And we're going to, in Euler angles, and we're going to add a new vector three. And we're going to rotate 45 degrees on the, on the Y. And then what we're going to do, so it's going to turn 45 degrees around the Y. And then what we're going to also want is to do the same for point B, but make it 45 degrees on the negative. So if it's zero, it's going to go left 45 degrees and then right. Now in the update function, there's a pretty cool function called ping pong. And this allows it to bounce between two variables. So we're going to add in the update a float, of a float, name it time. And we're going to use math.f.pingpong. And then we're going to multiply time.time, .time, the time step, and we're going to multiply it by the speed and utilize one as the length. Just trust me on this one. Then what we're going to do is we're going to update the Euler angles of this camera using the lerp function with vector three. And what we'll be doing is we'll be traveling between point A to point B and interpolate the time step between the two using our time calculation. Now you can probably include the two together, but I kind of like, I like to pull it out so you can see. So you see that the, t the speed is set up here and then you rotate between the two and that is it. So let's save this script, go in and we're going to go to the camera head. I'll let it compile camera head and we're going to add the camera movement. And so if you press play now, you now get a security camera that rotates back and forth and it updates in real time. So you know what that was? The camera needs to move forward just a little bit so that it, it doesn't see the top of its own, its own camera head. And you know what, that's actually a little fast. So let's, we can decrease this a little bit. So let's do like, see maybe 0.5 or 0.4. So pretty nice. And then in within their static camera of the individual that's just looking into it at our computer, because we have it in the background, it also updates in that camera, which is pretty, pretty nice. All right, the last thing I wanted to show you was how the script can work in other elements too. And I'm not sure if this will work right off the bat. So let's, let's just test it off. So the top of this, so if we add this camera movement script to here, yeah, there it goes. It already starts working. So the usability of this script is, is rather nice um, and, and easy to use to add um, some movements automating between the two. And then um, just to finalize it, let's do a cool configuration, configurable joint on the blades. This prop fan desk has a has the base, has the top, and then has the blades. So let's really make this something cool. So we can add, so this top, we can use that same camera script and move it over.
And let's adjust that speed as well, maybe to like 0.6. And so it's going to rotate again between the 45s. But we also have the blades. So let's add a configurable joint to this. We're going to lock the motions. And we're going to, um, it rotates around the Z because this is a propeller. So we're going to lock the X and the Y and maintain the Z as free. Then we're going to change the target angular velocity on the Z to 10, 100. And set the damper to 1. And if we do this correctly, when I start this, the fan should move, rotate, and the fan should move left and right. <laughs> so, so that's interesting, right? Um, and I believe I know what's happening here. So let's let's pause this. All right. So if we look at yes, so it is rotating again around this connected anchor, and we ran into this issue in a previous tutorial. So let's fix that. So let's just zero this out. So instead of it. It's a little hard to see so let's 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 let me show you that again so this is the rotated anchor point so when I was saying rotate around the Z it's going to use this as the middle point and it's just going to rotate around which is what was occurring what we really want is that to be in the middle of the fan blades so let's make this zero okay so what's what is going on there? Okay, so the issue with this is it's not connected to, let's go, let's add a rigid body to the fan. We're gonna use is kinematic. So that basically means the, the gravity won't affect it and it won't fall through the ground. And then we're gonna use the, the blades as the rigid body. So the idea is now it is connected to that rigid body and so should rotate with it. And if we press play, we now get a working fan that goes back and forth with shadows. It's rather nice. Again, I'm Major Batman, and today we showed you how to use render textures and a short, a short script as well as configurable joints to create some movement and life in an otherwise basic scene.